The 3,500 calorie myth. It is commonly claimed that if you reduce your calorie intake by 500 calories per day or 3,500 calories per week, you will lose one pound of fat. The origin of this is the energy content of one pound of adipose tissue consisting of 87% fat. One pound or 454 grams of adipose tissue, approximately 87% fat, therefore around 3,500 calories worth. The problem with this is the belief that if someone's calorie requirements are 2,500 per day and they consume 2,000 calories per day, they will lose one pound of fat per week, 52 pounds of fat per year. It just doesn't work like that at all. Drawing long-term conclusions from this is problematic, and some people use this to try and discredit the notion that calories are important. Eating 2,500 calories per day, if it is 20 calories above your maintenance needs, won't make you go from lean to obese in 20 years. If you cut a 100 calorie banana out of your diet, you will not vanish after 15 years. So what is the problem with this theory? Obviously, your body is comprised of more than just fat mass. You could lose almost all of your body fat and still not vanish. You know, bones, organs, muscle tissue, etc. But let's put that aside and focus just on fat mass. This oversimplified model of energy balance assumes that all components remain stable. If your calorie requirements are 2,500 calories per day and you consume 2,400 calories per day, you are not going to be in a 100 calorie deficit forever. As your body weight reduces, your calorie requirements would reduce. People often reduce their calorie intake and assume that their calorie expenditure remains the same. In reality, calories in and calories out are dynamic and intertwined. You weigh less, your basal metabolic requirements will reduce as it requires fewer calories to maintain that lower body weight. You will burn fewer calories through the thermic effect of food as your food intake has reduced. You will burn fewer calories via exercise as your body weight reduces. There may also be a reduction in non-exercise activity thermogenesis, both via the reduction of the energy cost of moving and also because some people move less as they lose weight. And there may be additional adaptive thermogenesis or metabolic adaptation. So this is the difference between static and dynamic energy balance models. If you assume that everything else stays the same, a small reduction in calorie intake might make you believe that you could lose a surprising amount of weight in the long term. For example, let's look at this public proposal for a tax on sugary drinks. It predicted that just a 37 and 43 calorie reduction per day could amount to 3.8 or 4.5 pounds of weight loss per year for adults and children respectively. And these tiny reductions in daily calorie intake could make a large impact on obesity prevalence. And wouldn't that be nice and convenient? Keep everything else in your diet exactly the same, but drink just half a can of Coca-Cola less per day and lose several pounds of weight per year. I like this example because a research paper plotted the continued impact using the static model and then overlaid their predictions based on the dynamic model. And as you can see, the long-term results from such a small intervention suddenly look a lot more subtle. So to anyone who's watching this video who thinks this is all mental masturbation or is wondering how it applies to them, let's just clarify. Many people inaccurately predict rates of weight gain or weight loss based on just a small change to initial daily calorie intake, overlooking that there are various compensatory mechanisms which can skew the results that you think you might get. If you need 2,500 calories to maintain weight and you consume 2,000 calories per day, you are not going to lose one pound a week forevermore. And due to the dynamic nature of energy balance, there is a strong likelihood that you are not going to gain or lose weight at the rate that you predict it is inevitable that your calorie requirements will change over time.